in this segment, Lisa Becker. Lisa, good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to have you back. You were here about, what, a year ago? Yes, about this time. Yeah, with Martinsburg Renew. Yes. All right, tell us what Martinsburg Renew is. Martinsburg Renew is a nonprofit. We raise awareness about drug addiction and recovery. So we like to work together with all the local organizations to do what we can to make life better for those that are struggling with SUD. Do you know what SUD is? S-U-D. Yes. I do not. Substance use disorder. Yeah, that's the official term for it. Now. That is. It's a new term. Yes. My, my wife works for the FDA, and she was telling me that that is the official term for yes. what we used to call addiction. Yes. Substance Yes, we use feel disorder. there's less, less stigma that goes with that term. Yeah. And uh, September is National Recovery Month. Yes, it is. Okay. What will you be doing in September? We are having a our second addiction awareness. Come on, and closer to your microphone there. Yeah. Second addiction yeah. and awareness recovery concert and we have hired a band to come up from Branson Missouri they are a bluegrass band they've been playing together for all of their lives but they came last year everybody loved them so much we had them back again we're having them back this year you sent me a clip of them that I watched yesterday about a two-minute clip and uh, the one guy in there sounds like Richard Sturbin from the Oak Ridge Boys. That is a <laughs> deep voice that guy has. He's great, yes. Yeah, yeah we, they, uh, were, they were wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the name of the band? Southern Rays. They're from Branson, Missouri. Southern Rays, okay. And uh, what time will they be performing? Any idea yet? From 1 to 4 in, uh, at the Purple Iris. At the Purple Iris, right, okay. September 8th, yes. And do you have a target goal for how much money you're hoping to raise? Uh, no, I'm, I usually don't look at... Uh, no, I do not. I just want it to be a success. And to me, a success is the people that are supposed to be there to hear will mm -hmm. be there. And uh, ultimately, we want to raise money. But uh, we, our main goal is to raise awareness. Uh, but eventually, if this continues to go well and we continue to do well with Martinsburg Renew, we would love to um, have a transition home for men and women coming out of recovery or out of inc incarceration. So that's our, main, our big goal. All right. And, and how do you get to see the show? Uh, go to Martinsburg Renew, and they're at the top of the page. There mm -hmm. will be a place to click on how you can get tickets. Mm -hmm. um, the ticket includes a meal, so you don't have to worry about buying lunch when you get there. It's all included. And uh, Purple uh, Iris is just a wonderful location. How so much will it be, Lisa? Forty dollars for all. Yes, for, for the ticket for the ticket and food. Right, ticket yes. and the food. Okay, yes. very good. And the Purple Iris will be providing the food, so they all have right. fantastic food there. Pam Lenhart is the guest speaker. Yes, she is. Who's that? She is uh, director of uh, Thrive Family Resources. It is a nationwide and worldwide, mostly online family support group. And she, her goal is to try to get more and more people all over the country to have in-person uh, recovery groups. And that is when she comes out, she, we're going to be in talks about how I can have or we can have a um, Thrive in-person support group. Do you tie in any of your work with Dr. Jonathan Hartins and the Mountaineer Recovery Center in the Village? Dr. Harton, he spoke at my first event in 2018. Mm -hmm. He spoke at our second event in 2019. Uh, he was supposed to be here this time, and he uh, he can't make it. But I will be talking about his, uh, uh, what's it called, the um, recovery, recovery village village yep. yeah yeah so uh, i saw uh i saw where that was in the paper last week and uh, i was i was surprised honestly to, to hear that it was already happening so soon because i've been hearing about it for years and mm -hmm. uh, i'm very much looking forward to uh, that being a very successful thing for dr harton so yes he's been a great support for us throughout bill yeah uh good morning lisa uh martinsburg renew uh is a couple of questions is it part of a national affiliation no it's not so you're standing alone and the yes that's that. absolutely yes. uh and you raise money and how is the money distributed to those in recovery uh through which vehicle through which organization okay at this at this point our money uh most of what we're making right now is to support the concert which brings people in to raise awareness because uh our main goal is to help the families. I mean, actually, our goals, <laughs> I guess they keep changing because there's so much to do. There really is so much to do in the field of addiction and recovery. But um, uh, we really feel that the families that are suffering through this with their children, some of them don't know what to do. Um, I, I went through it myself uh, 
I don't know, five or six years ago, I didn't know anything, and I've learned so much uh, through over the years and how to do it through experience. And I want to be able to help other families to not have to go through the things that I did. But you said that the thrust of what you're doing is to raise raise awareness. Yes. But the money that's generated is that going to be used for the uh, the uh, our similar program next year, or is it going to be going to the families this year, or how, or what? The it would be going towards to pay for this concert and what's left over would help but we also there's other ways like we there's the small ways that we can help that's very important like for instance to uh provide ga uh, gas cards for those that need rides to and from uh their detox or recovery centers um but you know after this really my goal because this is this is a hard this is, takes a long time to to uh to plan something like this but what i would like to do when this is over is to start really working hard on getting some big supporters so we can start looking forward to having that transitional home because that's going to that's going to be a lot of money and we're going to need some big supporters for that so at this point uh, we don't have big money coming in but you say transitional homes yes. is this something you'd be working with uh, uh with dr hartens or is it something you're going to be doing yourself an independent well effort? Uh, we don't have it planned yet but my in my mind it is a wraparound service where we will be providing not just a home but a wide variety of resources that they need like to to get a job get their license um, have their counseling everything that comes with recovery in follow-up when they're in recovery there's a lot of follow-up that comes with that and we would like to be able to provide that in a home that is um, because when they come out, they come out, some of them have absolutely nowhere to go. So at this point in time, it's more aspirational, what you would like to do yes. Than, yes. than concrete plan. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So we talk about substance use disorder, that smacks of a medical condition as opposed to a societal yes. issue. Okay. Um, now, looking at, I presume this, the email we, we just got is from a website or, or quotes your website. And here it says, we at Martinsburg Renew are a God-fearing group that believes we are fighting a spiritual battle and are keeping our eyes on the f on the and focus on God to help us know how to help. Uh, help, so this smacks more of a, a spiritual approach than a, than a medical approach. So what what is um, Martinsburg Renew? Is it, is it a uh, it's primarily a religious group that's trying to what is Martin okay. Berger, what, what is the approach? I guess okay. what I'm getting so at. So we don't. Um, we have not considered ourselves or quoted ourselves as a faith-based organization, okay. but we very much want to bring faith into it. We don't want to push it, but we want it to be offered. We want it to be offered as, as an, another way, a way to get through all the things that come with addiction and recovery. And uh, all, all of those on our board are, we, we know the Lord and we understand the importance of relying on the Lord to see us through everything. So when we look at the, the ultimate house, the, the facility that's to be built, is it primarily a, a medical facility? Is it a uh, support facility? Okay, if you would agree to allow me to come back on after we have got it all concrete plan because mm -hmm. we have not at this point like I said it's an aspiration but i realize the importance of having of, of our vision and our vision our mission and have it all written out we've not done that yet but that is our goal to get this done asap yeah and we, i would love to come back and, and share yeah. that with you so we can tell you exactly what our plans are we have a great need in the community that's that's a given uh but we also have several organizations that are trying to address the need it appears to what i'm hearing today that what you're proposing will be in working as part of one of these other organizations you're going to start another kind of standalone organization starting from scratch to achieve your aspirational goals wouldn't it be easier to to start working with one of the existing organizations where they're marketing trying to direct some more resources to the to those organizations to the okay so we do work with the other organizations they're all um 
organizations are already in place. But I, I believe that what will set us apart from those, and I'm not trying to set us apart to make us in competition with them. I want us to all to work together. But I do want there to be an organization and a home that has a faith-based approach. Um, I don't know. You know what? And even if there is already one, I don't think you can have too many. When you look at how many, the numbers of people that are in recovery, I mean, okay, let's just say we have a home where we might have room for 10 women, 10 men. Well, what if you, you know, in a month, you might have 50 people coming out going into transition. So we can't do it all. Dr. Hartens can do his part. We can do our part. There will be other, there's Oxford, uh, Oxford housing. You know, there's, there's a lot of things, but I don't, I really don't think we can have too much. And I, again, I'll, I'll repeat, I don't want to be in competition. I want to work together with the other organizations. As a matter of fact, at this event, I've invited every organization that does work in the field of addiction recovery to be there, set up their informational tables, let the audience know who they are and what they do, and the fact that we're working together to the, address this. The event, by the way, September the 8th, between 1 and 4 at the Purple Iris, it's the second annual awareness and recovery concert. They've got a guest speaker, music by Southern Raised, R-A-I-S-E-D, and it's hosted by Martinsburg Renew. If you haven't seen these folks, uh, go on YouTube and look them up because of the video you sent me yesterday, uh, they're fantastic, and it's just forty dollars for yes. for uh, yes. you get uh, the lunch, and then you also get the concert too, and the proceeds will help uh, with the Martinsburg Renew here. Lisa, why do you, are you involved in this, and why do you do the work that you do here? Because I have a son that had has been struggling. His his struggle began around so probably two thousand fourteen fifteen. I met Doctor Garcia, a uh, doctor uh, officer Garcia. He was the the president of Martinsburg Renew at the time. And then we started having events under Martinsburg Renew. And last year, he asked if I would be willing to take over the organization. So he, so I am now president of the organization, opposed to Dr. or uh, Officer Dar Garcia. Garcia. Yes. So uh, thank God, my son Alex is 20 months in recovery. He's doing fantastic, and I just want to, I just want to thank God first of all, but especially I just I want to thank the people that did help me but especially Pam Lamhart the lady that's coming from Minnesota mm -hmm. she's absolutely an amazing woman what did she uh, do to help with recovery she she has this organization that helps the families yes now in her organization she she I think she helps to get people into recovery but her main goal is to work with the mothers the families to help them to understand how to deal with the stresses of what we're going through because it's, it's pretty rare that somebody goes into recovery the first time and then comes out and Absolutely. and sticks with the program and and does fine this is a yo-yo effect it's Absolutely. you're up you're down you're in you're out it's mm -hmm. attempt number two attempt number three attempt number four it's a very difficult pattern to break when when i first started trying to understand this and i didn't understand it at all i remember hearing a story of a girl saying i was in rehab 18 times and I thought, that's crazy. No, what, how do you go in 18 right. times, you know? And it was only a period of a small amount of time. But I found out through my experience with my son and working and listening and talking to other people, they can go in one day, get out and be back in within the, the week. But, you know, it shows that they're trying. They really are trying. They want to get help. But it's such a difficult thing. The stress on the families, you started, yes. you, you started to kind of go into that a little bit, too especially for moms, because this is your kid. This yes. is, you carried this kid for nine months. You went through everything that's involved in that. Child's born healthy. You're thrilled. That's one less thing to stress about. And then you start to go through life. And then something like this comes along with, with your son. What age did you begin to see that there were issues? I'm thinking, uh, started, it's hard to see sometimes. For sure. one thing, you don't want to see it. You don't want to see it in your child, you know, because, you know, they go through so much stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And in the beginning, until it's an actual full-on grip of addiction, it's hard to, to, to notice those signs. So I would say probably he was around 18. And this year he turned 33. And he is 20 months in recovery now. So it was, it was I, I say I feel like he lost, he lost a good part of his 20s mm -hmm. you know, because of that. And uh, I'm just I'm thankful he's doing well today. I could see the, your shoulders when you said he was 20 months in recovery. You just got yeah. lighter yeah. as, yeah. as uh -huh. you got, uh, yeah. got through it. What advice would you give to moms out there and dads and caretakers who are looking at uh, someone that they love going through this and being frustrated by the struggles of relapses my first advice is learn learn what you can about addiction 
whether you want to believe it or not, the disease of addiction, learn about it. Because when you learn about it, you're going to start seeing, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But then you have to find, you have to find a, a support group to help you to get through that. Just like someone that's in recovery needs to have that support group, so do, does the family. That is whether you're going through it when they're in active addiction or whether they're in recovery. Because when our children are in recovery, you know, there's always that fear of relapse. We hope and pray it doesn't happen, but it could. But we have uh, oh this this group. It's called Thrive. Thrive is the name of the group, and they're just it's a fantastic group of mothers that you you can go on. I've listened. I've I've tuned in on those online meetings. There's been people from Greece, from Africa, all over the country, and we might be from all over parts of the world, the same different parts of the world, but we we deal with almost exactly the same thing. It's like oh my gosh, you listen to someone's story. It's like it's exactly what I went through, but. If you've already gone through it, then you can you can help support that person, and you can know that you're not the only one going through that. And it's all about support, right? I would think it'd be so difficult as a family member. The I don't know what the twelve steps are exactly, but there, there's the denial and anger and uh, bargaining and all, all that sort of thing. I would imagine that there there are parallel steps for the families that are going through it, with with the exception of you don't have the string to pull to change it. Yes. The addict themselves at least has, or the, the whatever the term is, right? The alcoholic, the addict, whatever. They can, they have the goal of stopping the activity for themselves. The family doesn't, can't do that. They have to. You just want. To, they have to live with with the results one way or the other and find a way to cope. That has to be very difficult. Yes, you want to save your child. Mm -hmm. We can't save our children from anything, whether it's addiction or no matter what they're going through, especially in their teenage and adult years. We cannot save them. But there, here's something else, and this is not a, in the least bit to knock all the other programs that are out there, recovery programs. But this one, the language is different. We don't like to use the language that comes with the stigma of addiction, like enabling, rock bottom, uh, or throw them out, let them figure it out on their own. What Pam talks about that rings so true is love them well. Love them. How can you not love your child? But when you're given advice from other people, just, you know, let them figure it out themselves, you know, it, put them out on the street. That's real difficult, but a lot of mothers do it because they think that that is going to be the answer. But we learn that there are ways to help and support your loved one within healthy boundaries. That's healthy boundaries is, is a, a very key term, I believe. And those are hard to set. Mm -hmm. I, can, I have to set my own. I can't tell another mother how to set her boundaries, but I can tell her what works for me, what doesn't work for me. Because you don't want to tell somebody to do something, sure. and then they listen to your advice, and then something happens to their child. That's that's nobody wants to deal with that. Were there many days when you thought you might not see your son alive again? <sighs> Every day, Every day, when they're in the in the midst of an act of addiction. Every day, and you'll hear this term a lot. Uh, is today the day I want to get the call? You you can't at, at nighttime. It's hard to sleep. You have to come to the decision to turn your phone off. That breaks your heart to turn your phone off so you can't hear that call coming in because they're probably going to call you five, ten times through the night. And if you've made that decision that I've got to set my boundary today, I'm setting that boundary and I'm not picking up the phone. That's hard. That is one of the hardest things I think I went through. But, you know, I had to learn. I learned. I learned through experience. What was different about the latest recovery that kicked in for your son to be able to remain 20 months sober? I think I have the right answer to that. And it's because he made the decision. I might have, you know, prompted him a little bit. And I prompted him in plenty of times other times. Sometimes we try to put them in recovery, but we can't do that. But he made the decision that this is what he wants to do now. And I'm tired of being tired. Don't want to go to jail. I just want to get better. And he made the call. He made the call to get the ride. And he was gone the next day once he made that decision. And he did great. How difficult is it to get placed in West Virginia when you're trying to recover? It's not, not now, not so much. Uh, back when he first started, when he, in like 2016, there was hardly anything. It was horrible. It was so scary. Because 
they reach the place where they they think they have uh they're ready or you think they're ready it's like oh god i'm so you know he's ready and there's nowhere to go but that's not the case anymore because we do have so many more resources now All and there are more programs out there to get people in You've got about a minute and a half. Sell this concert and dinner at the Purple Iris uh, to the people out there to get yourself a good crowd. Uh, come out and join us uh, to learn more about hope and healing. Have fun. Let's have fun. Enjoy the music. Have fellowship with each other. Oh, and we've got a community worship service in the morning uh, from 10 to 11. Um, our, our church, uh, Emmanuel New Life Bible Church, we're just uh, taking our church to the uh, venue and we're having our church there and inviting anyone that might want to come that maybe some that have church on saturday instead of sunday they would be available but uh this this we did this last year too the so. band is called southern raised again r-a-i-s-e-d you can go on youtube and look at their music they're phenomenal uh, at the purple iris september the 8th between one and four you get dinner too and pam lenhart is the guest speaker and uh in terms of getting the tickets how do you do that lisa Go to Martinsburg Renew on Facebook, and you will find at the. T I've got it pinned at the top of the page where my website is, and you just click on the website, and at the top of the page, it'll tell you how to get your tickets. Very good. Hope you get a great crowd. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming having in. me. Thank you.